Hi. Now, here's a great example to try if you're interested in revising speed time graphs or velocity time graphs, as some people call them. And just pause the video, come back when ready, and I'll run through the work solution. If you've got any problems, you can then check the methods. Okay, welcome back if you had a go at this question. Right, well, first of all, we've got to sketch a speed time graph to represent the motion of the car moving from A to B. And if I'm doing that, first of all, then I would want to set up my axes. So we've got, first of all, our vertical axis, which represents the speed. I'm going to call it V and write that in meters per second. Always label your axis. And then we've got the horizontal axis, which is going to represent the time t. And that's measured in seconds. So I just put a little s there. Now, we've got this car there moving from A to B. And we're told that at time t equals 0, the car is moving with a speed of 20 meters per second and is at the point A. And the car maintains the speed of 20 meters per second for 25 seconds. So first of all then, I'm going to have this as that speed of 20 meters per second. And because it maintains this speed for 25 seconds, it's going to be a horizontal line across there, something like that. I'm also going to drop a dotted line straight the way down to the horizontal axis here, and that will be 25 seconds. Next, we're told that the car then moves with constant deceleration of 0.4 meters per second per second, reducing its speed from 20 meters per second to 8 meters per second. So for that part then, we're just going to draw a line then, something like that, going down to, say, there, where that's going to represent a speed of 8 meters per second. I'll also just put in a dotted line down to there. Now, we don't know what this time is at this stage, but uh, we'll just carry on with the problem. We're told that the car then moves with a constant speed of 8 meters per second for 60 seconds. So our graph is going to now be a horizontal line, something like this, until we get to this point here, where, again, if we drop a dotted line down to here, this time interval represents 60 seconds. We'll just mark that in from there to there. That is 60 seconds. So we'll just put a little arrow on there as well, on those ends, just to illustrate that time interval. And then we're told the car then moves with constant acceleration until it is moving with a speed of 20 meters per second at the point B. So what I can expect then is the graph to then come up like so until we get to the 20 here. And again, I'm going to want to drop a dotted line down here. And essentially, that's our graph then. That's our graph that represents the car going from A, let's just say that this is the point A, to the point B here. All right? Now, I've drawn these dotted lines in. You don't have to draw those dotted lines in, but you'll see later in the question that dividing this up into various sections is very useful. Anyway, that's part A. Now in part B, we've got to find the time for which the car is decelerating. And we should be familiar with the fact that acceleration is the rate of change of Velocity, in other words, that's the difference between the final velocity, v, and the initial velocity, u, divided by the time taken. If you were to rearrange this formula, it takes you to a formula that you may well be familiar with, v equals u plus at. So when it comes to using this formula for this section here, because this is 
decreasing. Remember, acceleration can be measured by the gradient. So you can see this gradient is negative. We know the deceleration is 0.4, so the acceleration will be minus 0.4. So you've got to be careful on that bit there. So you've got minus 0.4 for the acceleration equals then the change in the velocity. So V is 8 and U is the 20. So you've got 8 minus 20 and that's divided by the time it takes across here. So all we need to do is just rearrange this equation for t. If I multiply both sides by t, I'm going to get minus 0.4t equals the result of 8 minus 20, which is minus 12. So to get t, t will equal minus 12 divided by minus 0.4. And if you work that out, you end up with 30. 30 seconds then is the time for which the car is decelerating. OK, well, that's uh, part B. Now we just need to move on to part C. Now, in part C, we're given that the distance from A to B is 1,960 metres. And we've got to find the time taken for the car to move from A to B. OK, now you should be familiar with the fact that the distance covered is represented by the area under the graph. So all we need to do is work out the area of all of these individual shapes below the graph. And to do that, it's going to be fairly straightforward. Only when it comes to this end shape here, we don't know the width of this interval. So I'm going to call that T. The other thing is, I now know this time here because we've just worked out that that was 30 seconds. So when you get to this marker here, that's going to be 55 seconds. So we'll just put that in as 55. And so if this is 60 seconds across here, by the time we get to here, this time will be 115 seconds. So all I need to do now is get T and add it on to the 115 by knowing then that the area under the graph comes to 1960. So let's start by forming an equation then. We'll look at the area of this rectangle here first of all. And so we know that this is going to be the width here times the height here. So 25 times 20 will be that area. So we've got 25 multiplied by 20 then we add it to this shape here, the area of this shape. This shape is a trapezium. So you should be familiar with the area of a trapezium. All you do is you sum the parallel sides times by the distance apart and divide that answer by two. So the sum of the parallel sides will be this side, 20, plus this side, eight. So we've got 20 plus the eight, we multiply this by the distance apart. That distance there from 25 to 55 is the 30 that we found there. So that's going to be multiplied by 30. And we divide this all by 2. Next, we go on to this rectangle here. So its width is 60. Its height here is 8. So we've got plus 60 multiplied by the 8. And finally, we have this end trapezium. So it would be the sum of the parallel sides. That would be 8 plus 20. So we've got 8 plus 20. Multiply it by the distance apart, which I've said is t, big T there, and divide this all by 2. So this is the total area under the graph which represents the total distance covered. So we can say that this equals 1960. So it's just a question now of just simplifying this and solving it for t. Now if you work out the sum of these first three terms it comes to 1400. So therefore we've got 1400 and then we've got this term here which is 28t divided by 2 so that's going to be 14t. 
So you've got plus 14t equals the 1960. So to get t, all I've got to do is subtract 1400 from the 1960, that gives me 560, and then divide by 14. So t equals 560 divided by 14. And that comes to 40. 40 seconds then. So, when it comes to working out the time it takes for the car to move from A to B, then all we've got to do is add the 40 seconds to the 115. So, therefore, we can say the time taken equals 115 then plus the 40 seconds and that comes to 155 seconds. So there you go. Alright, so I hope it's given you an idea about velocity time graphs or speed time graphs and the methods that we use.